Hello, Theo Traders. This is Gianni DePoche, and today is the 16th of April, 2024. And I'm really looking forward to reviewing some charts with you today because I think markets are very much at a critical juncture. And I'm here to ask you the question, do you have courage to buy the dip? Because uh, I think that uh, we have a nice risk-reward opportunity brewing uh, to take longs here, again, in the stock market. And I'm going to show you some of the reasons why I think that opportunity is presenting itself, not just from a cyclical standpoint, but also from a technical standpoint. So first and foremost, uh, I'm actually going to jump over to XLK, the tech ETF. You know, you started to get a breakdown from this ascending triangle, uh, which is a bit of a warning sign, but still not convinced that bears have truly captured momentum. Uh, not to mention, we've yet to see any sort of meaningful lower low or lower high. So the uptrend is still very much intact. Now, the reason I started off with sharing XLK today is because despite all sectors finishing lower last week and all indices finishing lower, you saw technology be down the least. It exhibited some relative strength. And usually coming out of market lows, you see tech, uh, sectors like technology and semiconductors outperform. And so if we jump over to the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index, it is up on the day. Now, I'm not convinced that today is the low. In fact, we may even have one more leg lower in stock indices uh, tomorrow or perhaps even on Thursday. But I still like the, the risk reward setup uh, from a time and price standpoint here. And a few names continue to hold up well, namely NVIDIA consolidating near the highs uh, and even AMD um, trying to find support on longer uh, term former resistance, uh, which has become support. But other some other tech names have been looking pretty good. I'm watching Super Microcomputer here as it coils tightly within this symmetrical triangle formation. But even if we run across the uh, Magnificent Seven landscape, you know, Google, uh, just a few points shy of its all-time highs. Amazon, still in consolidation near its uh, highs. Meta, uh, also consolidating near the highs. So, you know, no matter where you look, even if you look at Netflix, it's having a decent day today, uh, really at the apex of this ascending triangle as well. So everywhere you look, with the exception of, you know, Tesla in this magnificent seven, uh, I think you have good risk reward. Uh, recall that I have been an Apple bull for about a month now. And at the end of last week, I was uh, admittedly feeling pretty smart. But uh, <laughs> the first couple of days uh, this week, we've given back pretty much all of those gains from Thursday and Friday. That being said, I continue to like Apple from a risk reward standpoint. Basically, if we start to close below the uh, closing price, the closing low from the 26th of October, I think the risk reward is no longer favorable, but I think there could be a lot more upside, especially if you zoom out and take a look at this longer term cup and handle formation. So I'm most keen to see uh, Apple finish off the lows of the week. Uh, and if it does, it can in, if it can close close to where it finished last week, I think it will vindicate this uh, bullish thesis I have. But basically, you know, I'm risking a few percent for a potentially much bigger move to the upside, especially if it breaks out of that longer term cup and handle uh, on the weekly chart. And really, if it starts to close below this October low, it's probably gonna be dropping to the 130 area anyway, so I wouldn't wanna own it. But I'm okay taking a shot on a name like Apple, a blue chip name that you know has a lot of uh, fun flows going into that. You know, whenever people put money into the 401k, uh, it gets filtered into companies like Apple. So I think that looks pretty bullish uh, overall and something uh, that should be considered on the long side. I actually want to jump over to the crypto market because I think we're close to a major inflection point here. Uh, we did close at a new low within this consolidation on uh, Monday, and now we're pressing on support of this inverted saucer formation. And this is actually projecting prices to drop anywhere into the fifty to fifty-five thousand dollar area. And I think if Bitcoin dips into that zone, it it would present a an excellent risk reward opportunity to go along. So I'm not a crypto bug. I'm not a gold bug, but I do treat this like a speculative asset, uh, like anything else. And if we do drop into the $50,000, $55,000 area, I think Bitcoin could present a really nice opportunity uh, to open up an allocation into, as it could really turn into a, a, an alpha generating you know, allocation within your portfolio. So I like what's going on in this space. Uh, when it comes to Ethereum, 
I think we could drop another two to 300 points, uh, holding up a little bit better. Some of the cyclical factors, I think, look better for Ethereum uh, than Bitcoin. But on that note, I am watching MicroStrategy and Coinbase very closely here uh, because I think these could have some really nice buying opportunities in the next couple of days, perhaps in the next week or two, but it's I think it's coming very quickly. Um, I do want to jump over to the bond market as bonds continue to make new lows today. Uh, so we're finally starting to see an oversold reading on the RSI indicator on the 30-year bond. You're still seeing duration lead to the downside, which shows that the market is taking this risk of inflation very seriously. You know, we just had Fed Powell, uh, Fed Chair Powell wrap up his um, you know, speaking gig or, you know, interview or whatever, and didn't really, I don't, I don't think he tried to ruffle the feathers all that much. Um, markets are taking the risk of inflation much more seriously than the Fed is, I think. Right now, we're only looking at one likely rate cut uh, at this point in September. And, and the timing of that is pretty auspicious. So I was discussing that in the Theotrade uh, chat room recently, but um, maybe two by, by December. But uh, I think it's something we need to be aware of because you're, you're seeing duration lead the sell off lower. Um, that being said, I have been short bonds. Both of my shorts on the 10 year and the 30 year bond uh, have been covered as of yesterday and today, respectively. Um, and I think we're close to a short term loan. I think this is what you would look to happen, look to occur if you want to see stocks bounce. I think we want to see bonds catch a little bit of a bid here and maybe go through a one to two week rally. I think that could uh, help ignite technology. Uh, to outperform coming out of any imminent low in stocks. And we've seen that correlation hold up over the last uh, you know, several months. That is, um, tech seems to outperform when interest rates are coming down. And when interest rates are going up, tech doesn't perform as well. Now, you had a little bit of an exception to that rule you know, here uh, earlier this year. But that's what I'm watching for right now is I'm looking for a, a short-term bottom in bonds and for that to help kickstart a rally in technology. And that being said, you know, I, I think crude oil is a little bit overbought near term. Uh, I still think it's going to go much higher. It came within about 37 cents of our upside target in the $88, $90 area. Um, that may have been good enough to satisfy that upside objective, but I'm looking for this to drift sideways uh, over the next week or two. That could provide, you know, groundwork for bonds to bid, technology to reignite its bull trend, and to overall kickstart a new uh, bull run in stocks, which I think is uh, due to begin at any moment. Uh, the last stock I want to take a look at here with you today, uh, maybe I'll have another one, but we'll see, uh, is Cameco. This uranium stock I've been watching very closely. Uh, I picked up a long position back here in March, uh, and I do have uh, an idea to add to Pyramid Longs on this stock. Uh, if we do start closing about resistance. So that is my plan here. I think uranium offers a nice bit of diversification with respect to the energy play, a little bit of growth. We actually have a nuclear power plant sent to be open, uh, opened here in Michigan uh, sooner rather than later. So it does seem like nuclear energy is in, you know, becoming more accepted when it comes to energy policy uh, in certain segments of the world. And that is nothing but a tailwind uh, for the uranium space. And there's not a lot of players. So, you know, good, good opportunity to capture large swaths of market share in this space. Um, you know, the last things I want to look at concern uh, precious metals. So, you know, you had a nice run uh, in gold, just trying to close at a new high today, silver backing off a little bit, close at a new high yesterday, but all the names that we've been talking about showing some nice strength, Anglo Ashanti consolidating above former resistance turn support, Agnico Eagle Mines consolidating near the highs. We've also been talking about uh, positions in uh, gold fields and um, Alamos Gold. Those look good. Uh, El Dorado good looks gold uh, good. So I, I think precious metals uh, really have some more room to run and it should not be ignored. Uh, I think the easy money has been made, but there still will be opportunities. Uh, you just have to calibrate your return expectations uh, in accordance with where we are in time. So that takes care of everything that I wanted to talk about today. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the Theotrade chat room.